Guys, welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. This is going to be a fun episode with my friend Cody Nelson. And as you will hear in this podcast, Cody Nelson has made a change. He is now with the Go Hunt Gear Shop. He is the optics manager there at GoHunt.com. And you're going to get to hear all about that today. And actually, GoHunt.com Gear Shop The Optics Department is the new title sponsor of the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. And as you'll hear in this episode, you can contact Cody by emailing him at optics at gohunt.com or call Cody specifically at 702-847-8747, extension 2. That's 702-847-8747, extension 2. Cody is the glassing guru. He is the optics authority. If you have any optics needs at all, make sure to give Cody a call. He's going to take care of the J. Scott Outdoors podcast listeners. Guys, we're weeks away from the start of hunting seasons in most states. No doubt you'll have some trips planned. If you're going to be out for a longer than a few days, take a look at Canyon Cooler's Outfitter line of premium ice chests. They're going to keep your ice intact for just as long as other premium coolers, but aren't going to cost you a fortune, leaving more money in your pockets while keeping your food and drinks cold. And here's the deal. There are subtle differences between coolers that you don't really notice until you've used a few of them. What's great about the Outfitter series from Canyon Coolers is that they're designed to be flush vertically without the cupcake tops you'll see on other premium coolers. This lets you fit them into tight spaces with ease and they're not going to get hung up on other gear. It's one of those things you'll really appreciate after you've used them that you don't even realize from before. And Canyon offers the cooler industries only, no hassle, no fault, lifetime warranty. No matter what happens to your ice chest, no matter who bought it or how long you've owned it, if the cooler falls out of the back of your truck, and you drag it down the highway for 50 miles, all you have to do is send them a picture of the damage and Canyon will repair or replace the cooler for you. It's the last cooler you'll ever need to buy. It keeps ice just as long, if not longer, than the other premium brands. It costs you less and is backed by an incredible warranty and a Second Amendment supportive company based in Flagstaff, Arizona. And now, just for my podcast listeners, save 10% off Canyon's already low prices and get free shipping by using the code JSCOTT at checkout. Check them out at canyoncoolers.com. Guys, I'd also like to thank Kuyu Ultralight Hunting for their support of this podcast. Jason and his crew over there just do a phenomenal job of making very innovative products. Uh, I was able to use a bunch of Kuyu products on my latest doll sheep hunt, and I'm looking forward to Uh, using them this fall during the elk and mule deer seasons uh, in Colorado at the Ot6 Ranch. I want to thank them for their sponsorship. Make sure to go to KUIU.com. Check out the greatest hunting gear made. Guys, a friend of mine, Joe Durago, is a pastor in the Phoenix area, and he has a nonprofit called The Hope Effect. The Hope Effect is a nonprofit seeking to change how the world cares for orphans by providing family-based solutions that provide children the best opportunities to thrive. Currently, there are They are pioneering a new style of orphan care in Sonora, Mexico, where I spend a good part of my hunting season for deer and turkey. You can partner with the Hope Effect and have a shot at winning some incredible prizes every outdoorsman would love taking part of in an amazing raffle. Your ticket, when you buy it, enters you into a drawing where you could win one of 10 incredible prizes totaling over $12,000. You can win a Colburn and Scott guided coos deer and Gould's turkey hunt. You can win a fully set up prime bow from Ross Outdoors, a tripod with pistol grip from the Outdoorsman's. You can win a prospector cooler from Canyon Coolers and gift cards to Kuyu, Shooter's World, Go Hunt, and other great prizes. Tickets are $100 each, but there's only $350 being sold. All the proceeds from the raffle will have benefit the hope effect purchase a ticket visit www.azshootersworld.com that's azshootersworld.com i really appreciate joe and the hope effect and all the great things they do Uh, this is going to be a great way for them to raise money go to azshootersworld.com 
Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Today we have my good friend Cody Nelson, the optics authority, the glassing guru. Cody Nelson, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing excellent, Jay. Uh, nice to be on today. <laughs> nice to be on. Yeah. Glassing guru. Yeah, I'm huh? looking forward to huh? having you, the glassing <laughs> guru. I'm excited to have you on today. We've got a bunch of stuff to discuss. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I noticed that uh, you have made an employment change, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you uh, today about. You are now the Go Hunt Optics Manager with the Go Hunt Gear Shop. Uh, tell me a little bit about what's going on. You know, Jay, I had had a, a good long run with the Outdoorsman for, I think, uh, it was seven years, and uh, great company, good guys, loved being a part of their program. And, uh, you know, when, when opportunities come your way, you need to take a hold of them. And, you know, I kind of had to, to, you know, do some soul searching and, and, you know, basically do what's best for me and my family. And, and you know, everything was good over there. But, um, you know, just it, was, it just needed to make the change. And uh, long right. story short, we're, uh, we're, we're, we're good, you know. Go hunt. Uh, had a great opportunity, a great position that was, you know, open, and and uh, they were looking for some help in the optics uh, business, and uh, you know, certain things happen for certain reasons, and and you know, I, like I've always kind of said, or my mom always said that, you know, when God closes the door, He opens a window, and and uh, you know, what a great window it's it's been so far. So, uh, Lorenzo and and Chris Porter and. And uh, the boys have just uh, have treated me very well and made me feel very at home. And and uh, so, you know, it's uh, it, it, it's a little bit of a change, and, and everybody's still a little bit shocked. And you know, people call me all the time asking me, "Hey, you know, you know, can can we still talk to you?" Well, of course you can still talk to me. I mean, I'm, it, it's not like I'm uh, I'm still in the industry, and uh, and so you know, things happen, and and uh, we'll 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 just keep moving forward. You know, when you talk about uh, Go Hunt Optics, so before you got to Go Hunt in the, you know, being the optics manager, uh, Go Hunt was selling optics uh, through their website. Being the manager now, quote unquote, being the boss, the glassing guru over there, what, like, what will be your role and what will be your day to day as far as dealing with customers? Well, you know, Jay, the 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 day to day role, the main focus of what I will do is is um, you know bringing a personal touch, um, bringing a personal attention to detail on specific you know sales. It, it's it's not that they weren't doing that, um, but when you have as big a shop as they have, um, you know, online. Uh, it's it was you know it it wasn't that they weren't meeting the customers' needs, but we're wanting to grow those needs. And one of the areas that they wanted to focus and grow on was was you know building that personal relationship with their customers, asking the questions and and really kind of educating their buyers on what they were buying, you know, to make them uh, you know or help them with their purchase, you know, on a hunt of a lifetime or. You know, whether it was just a deer tag that they got every year. So that was the that's the main focus of what I'm doing. And then on the back end of things, um, the idea is to uh, bring in and you know, you basically uh, not totally change, but we're going to broaden some of the the uh, uh, products that are available and kind of have a little bit more you know direction as to exactly what uh, you know what 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 customer we're, we're focused on and trying to hit and, uh, and, you know, just kind of broadening, you know, our palette a little bit of, of what we offer. So by doing that, we'll, we'll certainly be able to help a, a wider range of customers. So, you know, th will, those are my day-to-day -day functions. Will you be pretty much dealing with every customer that calls on the phone or sends an email uh, in regards to optics questions, uh, will you be dealing with those yourself? Yeah, the, the I mean, they will literally be directed at me. Um, so anybody emailing, anybody calling the, the phone number there at Go Hunt, um, you know, when you hit extension 2, 
that will be going directly to you know the optics department, Cody, which is me. So let me ask you a question. Extension two, you didn't have enough weight to pull with them to say, hey, buddy, I want extension <laughs> one. Well, well, you know, I, 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 have, to, I have to earn my, uh, my keep. So, yeah, no, we actually rearranged some, some phone numbers and extensions to, to get that to where people could, you know, where it was uh, readily available to them and easy, you know, for them to access. So, okay, so uh, extension yeah, two... To, when they call the number, that is correct. That is correct. So, and then you can also Sounds reach good. us at at uh, you can reach me at Cody at GoHunt dot com, or you can email Optics at GoHunt dot com. Um, either one of those will come straight to me. So, Cody, from a day to day standpoint, you've been in the optics business for seven years. You've been, you know, glassing for thirty plus years. Uh, nothing really changes for you other than you're with a different company, but you're still talking optics every single day. You're still dealing with customers every single day, and that's something you enjoy, correct? Well, Jay, that's why this was such a, you know, when Lorenzo and I first started talking, that's why this was such an obvious fit because, you know, I feel like, you know, they were wanting to grow in an area that I excelled at and, and you know they're already doing things that that uh, that that I'm getting better at on a daily basis. You know, with the, the tech side of things, and and they're uh, you know they've they've taught me a lot just in the you know the short three weeks that I've been here, and and uh, you know I'm 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 certainly learning. But you know what I love to do is I love to to ask questions of a customer and understand exactly what his needs are, and then give him all the suggestions that you know, literally that he can go through and kind of make a decision for himself. And, you know, and, and not, it's not just about what Cody says or not just about what, you know, what I'm always telling someone. And, and there are customers that need that. But, you know, for the most part, um, you know, this is me getting to really dive into each and every customer and help them, um, you know, choose the products that are best for their their situation and and you know their hunt or you know like you know some people are, are just you know going on trips for for birding or it, I, I've had kind of since I've been here I've kind of been really uh, amazed at the different kind of clientele you get so um, but that's it, it that's what it does it allows me to to kind of give that personal touch to each and every sale and uh, in each you know each and every situation so um and Jay I think you've done me long enough and well enough to know that um, that's what I do. Um, that's what I'm, I'm good at, and, uh, and I love to help people. Uh, I've often said that I like seeing things more than I like, you know, shooting or killing things. So long story short, this helps me allow people to do that. Let's talk about, um, as far as product lines, uh, what you guys offer in the Go Hunt gear shop in the optics department what product lines, as far as manufacturers, do you offer? So, you know, Jay, we, we offer a full line of optics. Um, we are, you know, uh, Swarovski, Leica, Zeiss, Vortex. We've got some Huskama. We have Leupold. Um, you know, our, our, uh, our tripods are uh, Subaru, um, the, the Manfrotto's, uh, Slick's. Um, all quality brands, uh, all with a wide uh, range of products that, that will, you know, take anybody from, you know, the, the, the least experienced all the way to the most experienced and, and do it with quality and, and uh, you know, in good products. You talk about Karian, Swarovski, Zeiss, Leica, Vortex, so the, you know, the major brands, the loopholds, but you also offer rifle scopes, binoculars, spotting scopes, I mean, a full oh, line yeah, of optics. yeah. Yep, absolutely. Rifle scopes, binoculars, um, uh, spotting scopes. Um, it, 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 it literally anything that anybody would need on a hunt, or you know, for uh, you know, just finding game. We we can help you with that, and and absolutely uh, can get you set up for for a hunt of a lifetime. Okay, and you mentioned tripods as well, and we've talked about on prior podcasts and such how important glassing. 
uh, off a tripod is uh, you guys also carry full line of, of different manufacturers of tripods from ev you know every size, shape, and and model, correct? Yep. We I mean it's uh, we carry everything from ball heads to fluid heads, um, you know, and we're doing everything from compact tripods to to bigger, heavier, you know, uh, for heavier optic, you know, longer observation uh, tripods. So um, we literally can outfit you from, from uh, you know, from basically the, the light and compact all the way to the heavy, you know, uh, you know, long range glassing, you know, uh, setup. So Jay, you know, we're talking business right now, and I get that, and I love doing that. But I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, maybe I'm a little hurt. I'm not quite sure. But you haven't mentioned go. anything. You haven't mentioned anything about what you just did in Alaska. I mean, <laughs> you mean about, I, I don't you know mean what a guy's got to do to get the skinny. <laughs> that, that's, that, I, that, what, what do I got to do? Well, it was, um, it was an unbelievable trip. You know, after going to the Northwest Territories with Arctic Red and, and going and coming home without a ram, uh, and then, you know, having the Alaska Chugach hunt that I drew, I put in for with Lance Kronberger, um, Freelance Outdoor Adventures, and having that, you know, so to speak, in my back pocket, it was awesome to go. And, um, you know, the Chugach is just an unbelievably rough place. Uh, the roughest, Cody, it's the roughest place I've ever been as far as just terrain and topography and rocks and, you know, it seemed like it was raining the whole time, and it's obviously always wet in Alaska. <laughs> um, I got the full experience. <laughs> we we uh, took us a couple days to get into where we were hunting. So, I mean, about a two-day full walk getting in there. And then, um, you yeah, know, we but, had one full day where we spent in a tent and never even got out. And we're, you know, peeing in a bottle and, and uh, got the full <laughs> two-gas experience. <laughs> so, the question is, but I think you cheated a little bit. I want to know. Oh, yeah. I haven't talked to him yet. But I want to know just how much of your gear did Dar did, did, <laughs> did Dar have to carry? You know, when when Dar, I said Dar, you want to go on my Chugach hunt? He just looked at me. It's like, what do I have to carry? He he's no idiot. Um, <laughs> he actually he was awesome. He actually carried. We took one tripod and one spotting scope. We took the Swarovski sixty-five millimeter spotting scope. One of the reasons why we took that is because Lance and his crew all had ninety-five Swarovskis. And quite honestly, looking back, I mean, we probably could have easily gone without taking our tripod and our and our spotting scope. Um, but we felt like we wanted to, you know, get some digiscoping in with, you know, sure. with our phone scope and what have you. And, and you know, it, it just, you know, taking your own is always a good thing. Um, and I'm glad Darwin, it was awesome having him there. You know, he's been on, we've been on so many hunts together. Uh, Any time that I'm on a hunt without him, it just doesn't, it sometimes it just doesn't feel right, yeah. uh, but everything felt right on this one. You know, Lance and his crew, uh, is, uh, is there any, guys had been in, they'd been is, in the is, unit five days is, ahead of time. Is there anybody and, better? You know, is, from a professionalism standpoint, Lance and his crew, I can't say enough th good things about them. I mean, just from having all their gear dialed in to being, you know, complete athletes, you know, all in shape, you know, it was, it was all I could do just to keep them in sight um, and keep up with them. Uh, and, you know, they'd done a bunch of pre scouting which, which really helped on this hunt because uh, we were able to, uh, you know, basically watch the ram that I shot the full day before the season bedded him down you know he moved probably anywhere from 50 to 100 yards all day the day before i shot him and we were able no to kidding. actually bed him down right up until dark i mean literally bed him down um and yeah i mean all the credit of the hunt goes to lance and his guys it was a phenomenal adventure um we hi we started hiking at, at four something in the morning with headlamps got up there took us so three and a half, four hours to get up where we were going and uh, found the ram immediately, laid down 365 yards and uh, shot the ram. Perfect shot. I was real happy about that. And, you know, they had uh, toke hunters that started like two days after my hunt started. And so 
from the beginning, Lance was like, you know, if we could get it done early, then I can go with some of my other guides to the toke. And so it just worked perfect. Yeah, and I, I couldn't ask for anything more. Those guys were incredible. So thanks for asking. Uh, my well, body yeah, is just still, <laughs> still, you know, sore and, still feeling and what it. have you. But the, yeah, I mean, what's crazy is those guys walked out. Uh, we took two days to walk out. Lance and, let's see, three of his guides, they walked out in one day, got up the next morning and drove to Toke, uh, walked into the Toke, and they killed uh, a ram or two. I know one for sure on the first day in the Toke, and so those guys are just animals. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was incredible. So, you know, first, first personal uh, sheep that I've harvested, and um, I was happy to get an old ram. Well, that, well that's what I was kind of getting at because of all the sheep that you've helped on and been a part of and and uh, I, I know you've had uh, your own personal dreams and and you know things that you've wanted to get done and and uh, I just I couldn't be happier for you that's uh, congratulations and and uh, and what a smoker of a ram for sure was yeah, it uh, a good one. I, 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 I thought you said 11 and a half years old right yeah he has 11 uh, rings you know obviously they're born in the spring so you know, uh, being born in the spring puts them at 11 and a half and um, couldn't be more happy. You know, the the rams in the Chugach typically don't get as old as, say, some of the rams in the NWT just from the, the country and the terrain is, is so rough and the winters are harsh. Um, Lance, you know, says a lot of rams get shot in that eight, nine-year-old range, and so to get 11 and a half was, uh, was an awesome feat. Um, Cody, getting back to um, Go Hunt Optics and you being the manager, from a managerial standpoint, it's basically like the optics department is your baby, so to speak, right? I mean, you anything that happens in the optics department, whether it be online or be on the phone, will go through you. So, in other words, that you is, will it have it is full it is control. my sole yep that is my sole okay. function and purpose at Go Hunt is to make sure that. That, that the optics department, the optics line, um, and optics sales are are doing what they're supposed to do. That okay. is my sole one hundred percent job. One hundred percent. So when the J Scott Outdoors podcast listeners call, you're going to take care of each and every one on a personal level, correct? Is that a, is, is that a threat or a promise? <laughs> <laughs> Jay, that, that's the, that's the intention um, always um, is that uh, is that when people reach out to me, is that they will absolutely get the best care possible, and uh, in you know we'll discuss everything with them and <clears throat> and get them the <clears throat> hooked up. The, the best way we know how. So yes, that, that is an affirmative. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to uh, come find you. you. You will not have to come find me. I will take care of the, the <laughs> JSO listeners uh, unbelievably well. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, so with the with the full line of optics, like what you've talked about with the binoculars, the spotting scope, and the rifle scopes, you obviously have what I would call the big three. And this is this is me talking. This is my opinion. You've got Swarovski, Zeiss, and Leica, and those three companies have been battling it out for years, um, trying to gain customers' uh, support and attention. Um, but you mentioned also you've got you know your Vortex, which I believe is made in the USA. You've got the Loophold, you know, from a from a customer's point of view, you know there are what I would call the big three, and then there's the the other optics companies. But one thing I'm noticing is these uh, some of these other companies, they're coming out with some pretty unbelievable products. Well, I think, Jay, <clears throat> that's the, the, the changes that have been made over the last 20 years, and there have been great strides made in, you know, that that tier one glass. But I think that's what the, the biggest changes that have been made is that that all the other companies and even, you know, like Zeiss's Conquest series or, you know, Leica's Trinovid series or, you know, Sarovsky's SLCs, you know, those are those are pushing up on, you know, the, the, all the high-end stuff. And, I mean, they're all high-end binoculars, but it, they've made it really tough sometimes for people to choose between. And, 
And I think that that's the, the that that that's the one of the best things that we do is is that we have the opportunity, and I have the opportunity to go use all this glass and, and take it out in the field and have experience with it and literally put it to use so that I can best bring that back to the customer and explain to him to the best of my ability and, and, and you know, of what those differences are and what they're going to see and what they're going to get. And, and that, I mean, that's the whole reason behind being able to, you know, really talk somebody through a purchase like this because some people look at it like this page of optics and they just, they get frustrated because they don't, you know, they don't know. All they see is, is that why is that binocular, you know, you know, 17 or 1800 bucks and this one is 28 and, you know, they don't know all the differences and don't know what they're getting. So that's, that's my job is to help them walk them through that process. And, you know, some guys are going to want the best because, you know, that's just what their, you know, their friend told them to buy and other guys want the best because they want to learn and understand why it is. And, and so you have all these different scenarios and characters that call and, and you just have to be able to understand their needs and, you know, and, and, and qualify their needs and then, you know, give them the best scenarios and, and, and help them make the best choices for them. So, you know, that's, that's really what it's come down to is, is that there's so much out there that you're just trying to help them make the best choice for, for what they're trying to do. So, I mean, you know, I, and I've always said this, and I go back to this all the time, and you've heard me say it, that the most important thing we do is put our is, is get good glass. And, and so, number one, you know, upgrade your glass. And I don't care if that means that you're, you know, you're upgrading from a $200 pair of glasses to a $500 pair. Generally speaking, about in the $500 range is generally speaking where we like to hit and that's where people really start to notice the biggest change in glass. And then number two, we got to get them on a tripod because I, I get phone calls every day of people that, you know, they want a spotting scope and they want a tripod for their spotting scope, and that's what they plan on using. One of the guys at the shop, uh, you know, he was so excited, came back this weekend, and he mounted up his binos and – and he basically found more game with his binos mounted out, you know, with a 10 power mounted on a tripod and then used his spotting scope to, you know, see if it was of trophy quality or something they were interested in going. And he was so excited because of just how easy it was and how much different it was. So, you know, for that guy putting his binos on a tripod, it made all the difference in the world. And he's, you know, he's more than excited about going back out you know, to try to fill his tag. So, you know, and that's, that's the whole purpose behind this is to, to get into this and explain to people. And, you know, I know you and I have talked about doing different podcasts and what we want and, and you know, different things that we're going to expand on. <clears throat> but that's the whole point of this is to help people find um, more game and more efficiently with a lot, a lot less eye strain and, you know, and, and, and make it a, a more of an enjoyable experience. How was that so for that bring, winded <laughs> That brings up a good question because I get it a lot of times. If, you know, especially guys that are hunting in the southwest, they'll say, Jay, um, do you think I ought to get a pair of 10s and a spotter or just go with a pair of 15s? Obviously, there's some questions that come with that, but when you get that question, uh, you know, guys using eights or tens, either hand holding or on a tripod, and then having a spotter, or would you rather see them go with fifteens and just fifteens? How do you answer that question? Well, I would always typically want to know someone's experience level, and if they don't have a, a spotting scope, I would typically recommend that somebody go with fifteens first, because what they truly realize is is that once you know, if you make a jump from a 10 to a 15, when you go and you, you know, switch and make that power change, you truly understand the, the definition of long-range glassing and being able to find things really, really efficiently, you know, at longer distances. And, and, 
I, I think that that is a more eye-opening experience. Now, I'm not going to tell you that if a guy's super experienced and he has a 10 and a, and a, and a spotting scope, um, that that's not a good combination. Um, I think it's a great combination, and, you know, for certain people, I think it's going to work. Um, and, you know, the fact of it is, is, Jay, you know him and I know him. We know several people that have used a set of 10 by 50, you know, whatevers and a spotting scope and, and found some of the biggest coos deer in the world. Well, that's a proven combination. Um, but I think everybody agrees, even those guys, that, you know, for all day, every day, long-range glassing, a set of 15s would, is typically going to be, you know, the ruling glass. And, and I would typically say if you don't have a spotting scope and you're unsure, go with the 15s first. That would be my first and, and, and you know, first piece of advice for someone, you know, looking to, to step up the game. Don't you think, though, that's more for guys that are hunting, you know, Nevada, Utah, uh, New Mexico, Arizona, some of the more open country, but as you transition into some of the northwest guys and stuff where they're hunting a little bit thicker country, you would probably change and say 10s and a spotting scope, would you not? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because what most people don't realize is that, you know, the field of view that you're getting out of the 10s, and let's be honest, not saying that, you know, that mule deer or, you know, the western whitetail or, uh, you know, other animals out there. But, you know, looking and trying to find elk is is not always anywhere even remotely close as to finding, you know, uh, coos deer. It's just, it's just not the same. So, you know, that power, I think, becomes less important in field of view. <clears throat> Again, take that 10 by 42 mounted on a tripod and be able to switch back and forth between your your uh, your your tens and your your spotting scope <clears throat> becomes an incredibly you know deadly combination of being able to find animals and then being able to trophy judge them at very long distances. Um, most people just won't give a ten power enough credit, but they sure will once they mount it on a tripod. If you can keep it still. Those ten powers will 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 make long range glassing way easier than than or way you know way better than what anybody can really imagine. But as soon you know, as you one, take it off a tripod, it's it, it's you know the, the game changes. One of the things that I found interesting in the Northwest Territories as well as Alaska with doll sheep in particular, and I think you could talk about mountain goat in the same way, is with that animal being white. Uh, I can see how a lot of those guides do not see the necessity of glassing with binoculars on a tripod, but they definitely have their spotter uh, with the tripod, but most all of them just handhold, you know, eights or tens. And I will say after, you know, having gone mountain goat hunting last year and two doll sheep hunts this summer, uh, I, I can see why they just handhold, you know, because, you're basically looking for those animals. They're, they're, there's hardly any brush where those animals live, and you can pick them out very quickly, and then they immediately, you know, they just spot them, and then they, they don't spend much time. They go immediately to their spotting scope. Conversely, where, you know, mule deer hunting, elk hunting, coos deer hunting, you know, antelope hunting, some of the stuff that, you know, gets done here in the southwest part of the United States, um, that's where I can see, you know, you've got a lot more cover, you've got a lot more brush, and where picking a mule deer buck that's standing in a shady patch, you know, at a mile away uh, that you would never see if you were hand-holding, but if you're, you know, glassing more meticulously off a tripod, even with 10 powers, I think you're going to pick that animal up, whereas, you know, when you get in brush, you get in, in in the shady, you know, parts of, you know, either behind rocks or trees or what you know, a ridge line or whatever that's creating shade, I think you can miss a lot of animals. Um, so that's Absolutely. That's, you know, I always answer the question. I always have to answer, ask a bunch of questions to the person that asked me that question before I can give them the answer. Uh, we, <coughs> well, uh, but, I wanna, but Jay, I just ask, to, to expand on that real, just real quick, but what you just said right there is exactly why people want to call me and they want that expertise in the field to help them literally make those kinds of choices and, and why. That's the difference, you know, of having, you know, 
somebody that has spent a lifetime glassing versus you know somebody that you know just does it occasionally yeah so I, I was I was curious from a customer's point of view uh, obviously there's the go hunt insider and then there's the people that aren't the go hunt insider members from a customer's point of view uh, do do all customers that call or email do they have full access to you or just insider members no no everybody has access you do not have to be a member although um, you know there are some deals um, and points that you accrue as you spend more money on um, a lot of the stuff inside the the, the gear shop um, at, at uh, you know as, as being a, an insider um, I would highly recommend uh, you looking into that the the products are phenomenal um, the uh, not to mention but the the insider information that you get for drawing different tags around the west I don't believe that there's a better system out there um, it's easy to navigate um, and you know right and just so everybody knows coming up here I believe where you know some of the draws are going to start happening in December and if everybody's not paying attention, that, that all comes out pretty quick. So, um, you know, I highly recommend, you know, you know looking at the, the, that our insider um, program. Um, and, and it is a true value when you do that. Uh, but as far as having access to, to me and the optics department, but, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're an insider or not. Um, but, if, you know, if you'll make the phone call, um, you know, we will absolutely treat you right. And, uh, and, and we will help you out for sure. Cody, I want to ask you, um, kind of wrapping up here, to give me some glassing uh, tips, some fundamental glassing tips, maybe for some of the people out there that are listening uh, that, that, you know, don't have a ton of experience and maybe even to the guys out there that are, that are experts and, you know, professional guides. Uh, can you go through a few fundamental tips yeah, for glassing, it, it, kind of I mean, groundwork? For sure. Um, you know, first and foremost, I think you've heard us talk about um, making the transition from, you know, tripod glassing versus not. But, you know, regardless of what you're glassing from or what your platform is, um, one of the biggest things, I see people moving around a lot. It's almost like they're bored or they're, you know, and, and there's a time to move around. If you know a piece of country really, really good and you know where the animals should or shouldn't be, I get it. Power glassing or, or moving at a rapid pace and looking at different places, there, there's a time and a place for that. <clears throat> Generally speaking, I think the biggest people that, the mistake that people make is using the field of view for a given spot. And what I mean by that is is that, you know, binoculars, let's just take a 10 power binocular, um, you know, generally speaking, they have a 330 to, you know, 350 or 60 foot field of view. And when I'm looking at a piece of country, I think people have a, a, a tendency to look at the center of the, the, the field of view, and then they move the binocular to the next field of view. And <clears throat> I think the number one thing to tell people is, is that if you will slow down a little bit, and you will let your eyes work the entire field of view and look for those colors and those shapes and those, the flick of an ear or something that just doesn't look right. But if you will use the entire field of view, and some people call it gridding, some people, you know, gridding can be broken up into different things, and we'll get into that another day. But, Jay, I'm just talking about letting your eyes wander within the entire field of view that you're looking at, and once you've, you know, once you've done that, then move it over to the, you know, to overlap, and then let your eyes wander. I think that's the number one thing that people don't do with their binoculars that they should. They don't use the full field of view for, you know, the, the reason that it's nice to have a full field of view. They don't let their eyes wander within it. That's, that would be my biggest piece of advice. Um, well, you know, let the, me ask you a quick question in regards sure. to that, just so I understand you completely and, and the, the listeners do. Um, what you're saying is you want to glass in the center of your binoculars and, and really glass what I would call in the heart of the binocular. But before you move your binocular, 
You want to be in a relaxed position that allows your eyes to quote unquote swim or kind of move around within the entire field of view. So you're not recommending people swim their eyes right away. You're saying, you know, focus, you know, really hone in on the center and, and where you're looking, but then kind of relax and allow movement to be picked up in the peripheral all around the whole edge, top to bottom, Absolutely. side to side of the binocular. Yep. Okay. Because cause what, what happens, Jay, is that if you're, if you will take the natural tendency is for us to look into the, the center of the tube, right? Well, if all you're doing is looking at the center of the tube and, and, and you have a field of view, let's just say 1,000 yards, it's 350 feet, and you go to overlap between you and the next one, and all you're looking at is the center, well, I mean, now you've got between, you know, center to center, you've got, you know, 350 feet in between those two, and you're only covering the middle, you know, the middle part of that. You've done some overlaps, and I think you're missing some, some you're missing some, some dirt. And so um, I think it's important for it literally for people to slow down and let their eyes wander. I like your term swim, you know, let, 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 you know, take in all the area. And then once you feel like you've looked it over pretty good, then move it, you know, move it over. And you can do this both hand holding and from a tripod. But the fact of it is, is that I think that's when people start to realize how much easier it is from a tripod. One, so more I think that, in regards, <coughs> yeah. one more question in regards to that. Um, when you are scanning a hillside, whether it be off of a tripod, which we highly recommend, or hand-holding, in a normal fashion, if you're glassing across a ridge, you know, you're on one ridge glassing across, are you typically sweeping or, you know, going left to right or right to left as you say, you know, you're talking about glassing in the center of your binocular and then let your eyes swim and then move it over so you're not missing anything. From a, from a uh, logistics standpoint, are you typically sweeping left to right, right to left, or are you typically sweeping up and down, down and up, you know, up and down, that, down that, and up? That's a, a fairly common question, and I would tell you that the first thing I tell people is, is on a general rule, I'm always going left to right, right to left. You know, and then, and then I, I, typically speaking, I start at the tops and, and work my way down. But again, a lot of times I'll let the terrain dictate that. Um, and I think, Jay, the, the, the easiest way to kind of tell this is, is that, you know, if you're looking at a pretty open hillside, the left and right tends to work very, you know, a lot better. But a lot of times, like if I'm looking in uh, across a canyon and, and there's any pines or, you know, big vertical trees in it, it's kind of funny because a lot of times my eyes will, you know, they, they, it just kind of works that, you know, when I go up and down through it, it, it I, I seem to pick up more than, than if I were going right to left. And, and, I, and again, you know, you know, these c kind of become personal things, but, you know, just... I tend to let the terrain dictate, and, 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 and only until someone really starts spending time doing that do they really start to feel like, gosh, I, you know, like I, I, here I am a thousand yards away, but yet my binoculars, it kind of is difficult to follow the terrain, and then you'll kind of find yourself following certain patterns within the, the trees or, like I said, pines or, or bushes. And anytime I'm dealing with big pines, I'm almost, almost always going – you know, up and down, and when I'm in the brush or, or you know, I, I, I'm typically going right to left. Wouldn't you agree, too, if you're up on a point and let's say that, like, there's timber on, on your left, timber on your right, and maybe there's kind of a long meadow or chaining that, like, goes away from you, that would be a scenario where maybe you just, you're basically looking up and down that whether you're going left or right or you're going up and down you're going to cover that opening first or if you're exactly you know gla glass in somewhere where there's you know thick on all sides but you have kind of a vertical avalanche shoot or something it would be kind of crazy for you to make little sweeps left and right whereas you could either start at the bottom and just pan up or start at the top which i would typically start at the top and just take one sweep down 
Um, and then you've basically covered everything in that avalanche chute the most efficient way. And then if you want to go back, you can kind of go back and start sliding left or right. But, but that would be a case like an avalanche chute or something where it's a vertical uh, opening and you'd want to cover it as quickly as possible on the initial pass. You know, I would start at the top and just pan to the bottom. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's funny to like, you know, and I think we've talked about this before, but they're one of my favorite glassing spots. There's just this horrendously long ridge that literally goes from top to bottom. And it, you know, from my high on my right, it, it, it goes at about a 45 degree angle and goes all the way down, you know, to, to my bottom left. And, and, and this is why the importance of, you know, even if you're not using a tripod again, but you, you, it becomes so much easier when you use a tripod and a, and a head. Um, like, I almost, th- th- this, th- the way that the trees are in this particular hill is, or it's not really a hill, it's a mountain, but the way that the trees are in the vertical and the way that that ridge comes down I almost literally stair step it. Like I'll I'll put a field of view up and I'll come over a little bit and drop down and then go left a little bit and then drop down and then go left a little bit. So you literally start and and, and the whole time I'm doing that, the terrain is dictating how far I, I I move out left and then I drop down and I move out left and I drop down and so again I'm letting the terrain dictate how my eyes flow through that, you know, because you can imagine if you were just trying to go left and right, you know, if I went all the way left, I'd be, you know, somewhere on a completely different ridge. And so I just think for tracking and knowing where pockets of deer are, I typically try to pick the terrain out. And I, I, and like I said, I, I kind of stair step that particular ridge. And then, you know, other times I'm moving vertical because the trees are vertical and, other times I'm moving left and right because that's the way the brush kind of is. So I hope that helps. I, 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 it yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense, and you know, to me anyway. And and uh, and I'd, I'd like to say that I'm fairly successful at finding game. So um, I, I hope that that makes sense to our listeners. Yeah, for sure. Um, any other tips that you want to leave them with? Yeah, uh, you know, um, you know, Jay, th- there's. You know, you know, the 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 one thing I will tell people, um, th- this is a great one, and this is more speaking about the optics themselves. I think it's pretty amazing of how many people that you end up talking to that don't set their diopter, and they use this, the main center focus, but they've never set the diopter to their individual eyes. And sometimes um, I, I would tell people to um, that they really need to read the manual for their binoculars, and they need to, to understand the focusing system um, because they may be causing themselves a lot of eye strain that they're not really paying attention to, and that really is completely and totally unnecessary. So I think that's another, um, you know, as far as the equipment goes, um, I. I just tell people, please read the, the manuals, and if you don't know how to do it, call me, and I'll walk you through it. But a lot of people set themselves up for failure right out of the box because they're, 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 not, even, they're not even reading the, the, uh, you know, how to focus their binoculars, and, and it's like anything else. We always want to get to the prize first, and, and, but I've had people literally not even know that there's a diopter setting that helps you focus, you know, um, in most cases, it's your right eye, and there's there's a lot of people that don't know that 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 focus is even there. Yeah, it's very important, uh, Cody. I, I know you've got to get back uh, with customers and what have you. I know you have a full slate of of, of, of <laughs> helping customers and what have you. I want to give you a chance uh, to let the listeners know how they can reach out to you by phone. Uh, and by email, and and even more than that, um, I want to give you a chance to, you know, let the customers know how important it is that you know each one is like family, and you're going to treat each one important, and that uh, 
you know, especially the J. Scott Outdoors podcast listeners, um, you're going to take care of them. Uh, talk a little bit about that and then let us know exactly how we can get a hold of you. Okay, Cody, I know your time is valuable and I know you've got other customers to handle. I know you were working with some this morning. I want to give you a chance to let the listeners know how they can reach out to you either by phone or by email and how important their business is to you. Yeah, uh, Jay, the, 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 the three ways you can get a hold of me are, are, are this. Optics at GoHunt.com or you can individually you can get me at Cody at GoHunt.com and then by phone it's 702-847-8747 and hit extension 2 and that will take you directly to me. Again, that's 702-847-8747 extension 2. Um, Jay, you know me. We go way back. You know how I take care of my people. You know how I take care of my customers. Um, I try to develop relationships, and not just relationships, friendships with people. Um, I try to relate to people. I try to understand what their needs are, and I literally I, I give them the absolute truth when it comes to, to buying. Um, I will you know I will make sure that people you know know the things they need to have. I, I, I will tell people things they don't need to have. Um, I'm just trying to treat people like they want to be treated. And that's, you know, be told the truth, the best information, and, uh, and you know, and, and, and able to, uh, to help them, you know, again, get out in the field and find game. And that's, that's really, really what we're trying to do here is, is, uh, is set ourselves apart and give people the best expert advice and, uh, you know, that we possibly can. Well, there you have it, the glassing guru, the optics authority, my friend Cody Nelson, the new manager at Go Hunt Optics in the gear shop. Uh, Cody, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing. And um, did you see those pictures of my Ram on Instagram? Uh, I did. I looked them up, and they're absolutely phenomenal. That's a yeah. hog. Yeah, it was pre pretty neat. It well, was, I'm happy was, for I you. Tried to I tried to document the hunt with videos and photos the best I could, and um, you know we're we're days away from elk bugling, and um, I'm headed over to the Ot Six Ranch and going to start taking inventory over there. So um, excited! Nice. I can't wait to hear about that. Yeah, already seeing some bucks hit the ground in Arizona and and uh, <laughs> Utah, and so it's it's our time of year, man. Well, it's uh, I'm going to try to go spend some time in the field this year with uh, this weekend coming with the kids and and uh, shoot a little bit and uh, do some glassing for their. We've got a uh, we've got a youth 23 uh, um, you know any antler tag, so we're uh, we're looking forward to that too. Awesome, man. Well, uh, congrats on your new uh, position, and uh, I, I know you're going to do great and flourish. And uh, I appreciate your friendship of. Probably close to 30 years. No, oh, I think we're I'll working on 30. I'll be chatting at you. <laughs> All right, big dog. Well, I we're look forward to it. We're... And and I just appreciate right, you having us on and giving us the opportunity, Jay. Thank you. All right. All right, buddy. God bless. Take care. Yeah, God bless you too.